Hey everybody, it's Jason Blaha here, and today I want to chat with you guys a little bit about dips, uh, how I program them for myself, how I program them for clients, and my viewpoint on them in general. Now, a lot of times people like to call dips squats for the upper body, and while that's well-meaning, really the dip kind of fits a much, much different role than we would think of as a squat, and then the biggest problem is, of course, as soon as you say that, people start saying, so what's the equivalent of a deadlift? Which, well, the deadlift is its own beast. It's not even a good muscle builder. Uh, so you would basically need to find an upper body test of strength that is terrible for putting size on you as the only exercise. So that analogy never works. But the thing with dips is that people say that because a lot of people think of, of squats as being the ultimate lower body exercise to put mass on you that kind of moves your body through space. And it's a push just like the dip. Now, the dip is an interesting exercise because of that. It has a long range of motion. All right, it works the pectorals and triceps more effectively than just about anything else you're going to find. I'm not saying it's the best. I'm just saying that you don't find many exercises that can do a better job for either one of those muscles. All right, it hits them very, very effectively. It uses a large number of stabilizers and it moves your body through space. Okay. So the dip is really a, a fantastic exercise. The other thing that we come to with it is that it is extremely versatile. Uh, especially when you have things like V-bars to where you can vary the grip width. Right? When you can vary that grip width, it gives you the ability to focus more on how wide of a grip you want, how much stretch you get on the pecs, uh, how much you put strain on your shoulders. Right, because for someone like me who doesn't do well with really wide grip benching, that ability to bring the hands in a little bit and treat it similar to a medium grip bench press or even a close grip bench press is really, really fantastic. And that's something you can do just by changing the angles. And if you can find the right angle for you, it tends to be an easy exercise on the shoulders. Uh, the other thing to look at with it is that loading. It's actually an exercise that you can do great with with just body weight. Now, a lot of people will say, well, that's too light, but it's like, no, guys, sets of 15 to 20 can still build muscle mass. And when you think of the different ways you can place a lift like this into your training, I personally like to use it as a secondary exercise, like the, the clips that you see above of me doing all these sets of 10 with the bands. These were done after doing a max bench and five sets of floor press. So I'm already fatigued. My, my chest and triceps have already been worked. So even a fairly lightweight on this, in my case, you know, 220 pounds of body weight, plus that mini band, is actually a fairly large amount of tension. Getting much more than 10 rep sets is difficult. And I think that's where the dip shines, is when we start hitting the 10 plus rep range. I think that is where the dip is the most effective. That's where I think it's the most effective. I don't actually recommend people use low reps on it, and I'll get to that in a minute. Uh, but as far as that goes, we have a lot of versatility in how we can load it for different strength curves. And people say, what do you mean? Well, you guys have seen me do it with plates, right? Right, you've seen me do it with weight plates and do rep work. But you've also seen me do these bands. So with plates, we kind of create a straight weight situation, but it's also a balancing act. Um, there's one reason I don't always like plates, particularly if your shoulders have been irritated because there's also that swinging weight and the stabilization issue. Hey, but that's also great if you're trying to, again, work on being able to stabilize your body. Those plates can pull you off balance, forces you to learn to stabilize. But again, not always good if you're having some shoulder issues, but the bands don't do that. So let's say you run a mini band over the top of yourself or even a heavier band as you get stronger. Uh, we get something that creates a stretch reflex on the chest. Because a lot of times people would look at something like the bands on a dip and they would say, oh, that must be great for triceps. Well, it is, but that's not really where you feel the band. You feel the band at the, on the chest, and it's because the dip is one of the chest exercises that allows you to get a stretch reflex in the chest. Okay, that's why it shines so well. It's just like dumbbells in regard to that, because that's the reason people use dumbbells. Let me, let me rephrase that. That's the reason intelligent people use dumbbells. Okay? The extra range of motion that you can't get with a barbell that puts a stretch on your chest. Well, dips do the same thing, because if you notice my bar path there, it's coming through my ribs. So if I had a barbell there, my rib cage would be stopping the weight from coming up. Well, with a dip, 
we can get a deeper stretch. We can get a stretch reflex, also called a myotatic reflex. When you use bands, anyone who's ever trained with bands, especially over barbells, knows that we get a larger stretch reflex when we use bands. So what ends up happening is that you get a stretch reflex at the bottom, and then when you come up and the bands kick in harder and you hit that band tension, right at the point to where the stretch reflex makes the muscle contract harder, because that's what happens. When you do an exercise with a stretch reflex, it's not the stretch reflex that makes it contract harder at the bottom. It's that on the way up as you get to the top, the muscle contracts harder as a response to the stretch you got at the bottom. Okay, so that's one of the reasons a lot of stretch uh, type movements are very, very good for hypertrophy. That's one of the reasons. But when you take the bands and you get to the point to where the muscle contracts harder from the stretch reflex, the band is now kicking in and trying to slow your acceleration down. Okay, which makes you do more work at that point. So what ends up happening is that when, when I do them with bands, I get this cramp right through the whole midline of my chest. Um, it's almost like a diagonal line just above the nipple that kind of cramps through both pecs. Like you feel like a cramp go through there, especially on the last couple of reps or when you, as soon as you finish the set. So it's kind of an interesting effect. But the thing is, you can do them with bands and it's easy to set up. So if a person doesn't even want to run over and set up another barbell for another exercise, you run over the dipping bars and just grab your band and throw it, loop it over yourself. And you've added resistance and creating, created really a whole new exercise out of the dip with a different form of strength curve. Minimal equipment. Right? That's phenomenal. You can also do them with chains. So if a person, for example, wanted to really focus on triceps even more, you could load chain weight, body weight, and then on your belt, you could hang chains, and it turns it into a far more powerful tricep exercise. Because again, we're getting heavier as we get towards a lockout. Reducing weight at the bottom, increasing it at the top. So we're reducing the, the tension quite a bit right where we're using the chest. And then as the triceps continue to do that deeper work at the top, we get a more pronounced effect. But the interesting thing is that it still works the chest very, very hard, right? It works the chest very hard. So we have those options and we have the option of, again, changing the grip. We can change the angle to put a little more emphasis on triceps versus chest. And I think what people need to remember with this movement, you can't remove either one. So when we say emphasis, we're talking about a very, very small emphasis on one versus the other. This exercise, any way that you do it, as long as you use mostly the full range of motion, is going to maximally, not necessarily maximally, but heavily stimulate the pecs and triceps. It's unavoidable. Uh, so we come to the point of why no lower reps. Uh, because quite frankly, the dip is an exercise that can put you into a bad position for your shoulders. Uh, some people cannot do it without sternal pain, and people have, have literally cracked their sternum on them who are not built to do this exercise. Uh, but the problem we have is that with heavier weight, it could pull you down, particularly with lower reps, because heavy weight's relative, isn't it? You might have a guy out there who could hang 150 pounds and do sets of 12s. Okay. To helm a heavy weight on a dip is not your heavy weight. You might have someone else who with a 45 pound plate is a three rep, three rep max. So heavy is relative in that regard. So when I say a heavy weight, I'm talking about a weight you can't handle for many reps. Well, the issue we have is that it can pull you down too low. Now, you'll see some younger guys who will come in, and I, I've seen it in my thing, well, you need to go lower on your dips, and all the older masters lifters are calling him a jackass and making fun of him. And rightly so. Because you get that if you have a guy who's only been working out three or four years, he's still kind of a neophyte. He, he does not understand the needs of master's lifters, and he doesn't understand what causes injury. Like no one with only three years of training experience does, right? It's impossible to learn all of that in the first couple of years. So they don't know any better, and they're like, well, you need to go really, really super low. And it's like, well, when you have 19-year-old joints, that's great. But the problem with the dip is that it can actually tear rotator cuffs. Right? It can tear pectorals because it has unlimited range of motion. In other words, you can take a dip to a range of motion that your shoulder structure personally will not physically allow for without tearing something. And so the, the thing to keep in mind is that as we get a little older, we probably don't want to go lower than parallel. And you know what? Even at parallel, it puts a deeper stretch reflex on your pecs than a bench press can. So it's, it, again, it's still a fantastic exercise at parallel. And people forget that. Uh, the problem we have with it, though, is that as we start doing really low reps, we risk taking a heavy weight, now for, heavy for us, and pulling ourselves into a compromised range of motion. And that's when injuries occur. 
So I don't like treating it as a max effort exercise or a really heavy exercise. When guys are like, I'm going to hit my three rep max on a dip. I'm like, mm, maybe if you're 19. But you still might knock yourself out of the training game doing that when you fail a rep. Right? You still might permanently injure yourself, then you won't be doing dips or bench pressing. Uh, so it's an exercise that's very, very versatile. It brings a lot to the table, but I think we're better off treating it as a volume exercise. Again, doesn't mean you can't put heavy weight on it, because if you get strong enough on it, you can probably crank out sets of 10 or 12 with 100 pounds of plates. But it's going to take you a while to build to that. And if you're at a heavier body weight, you might not ever reach that. But that, I think that's where the real beauty of this exercise shines, is treating it as a, as a true hypertrophy movement, not something that we're trying to max out on or test our strength on. All right, guys, but well, that's really all I have to say on that today. I hope it's been informative, and I will talk to you guys next time.